there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. I mean, I am nervous. I'm very, very nervous at the moment. I'm a doctor, and I'm going to have to now become a patient. I'm here because I want treatment for my homosexuality. And I'm investigating gay cures. And I don't think that's going to be very nice at all. Oh. Your thoughts are unnatural and disgusting. <laughs> I've been a doctor for 12 years, specialising in sexual health, but I'm amazed to discover that even in 2013, homosexuality is still seen by many as a psychological problem. It's because gay is not happy. Gay is not good. He was struggling with this tendency of homosexual thoughts. And something that can be cured. The spirit of perversion was cast out. And how many people have you helped? More than 50. A growing movement exists on both sides of the Atlantic, offering controversial gay-to-straight conversion therapies. That is the cause of it, right there. I missed all this at medical school. I must have been ill that day. And often for money. Shall I pay you for this session? Yes. Two, three, four, five. And some are even campaigning for the NHS to provide psychotherapy to reduce gay feelings. I'd like to see open-mindedness that allows individuals who want to move away from homosexuality to explore that in the NHS. All right, should we go in? To properly investigate, I've decided to undertake gay cures myself. You just attach that to the middle of your penis. Middle of the shaft. I want to see what's involved in a range of treatments for what is termed by some as same-sex attraction disorder. Your genitals don't lie. I love that. Your genitals don't lie. So, I'm going undercover. Just how look good. They're all right, aren't they? If being gay is something that can be cured, let's see if they can cure me. The hat of heterosexuality, the polo shirt of masculinization, and I go forth into the world a warrior. I'm tucking in a little bit here so it doesn't look quite so baggy because I can't help myself. <laughs> I first became aware of the prevalence of gay cures eight months ago at my Harley Street clinic. A young male patient came to see me seeking help to change his sexuality. He was gay and he didn't want to be gay. He wanted to be made straight. And I remember my initial knee-jerk reaction to that was just, don't be so stupid, don't be so silly. You, you can't do that. I was almost offended by him saying that. When I first looked into it, I was shocked to uncover hundreds of people from self-styled religious healers. Get out of Jesus' name! He was set free by that same Jesus. Amen. Amen. To qualified therapists who claim they can help reduce unwanted homosexual feeling. For some people, homosexuality is not fixed and is, in, is changeable. I started talking to people in the UK and US who had undergone a variety of gay treatments, and some of the cases really disturbed me. Like this young man, who nearly took his own life as a direct result of gay to straight psychotherapy and treatment through his church. I walked out of there feeling emotionally abused. I became suicidal. I would absolutely have put a bullet through my brain. After hearing such horror stories, as a doctor, I've got real concerns about the harm some gay cures may cause. I want to understand just how some of these treatments are supposed to work, so I've decided to become a human guinea pig and undertake them myself. But before I start, though, I want to scientifically test how gay I actually am. I found a test that's been devised by Cornell University. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. I'm gonna take it now. I'm then gonna undergo as many of the different cures as possible. Please take a seat. And then I can take the test again to see whether there's been any change at all or not. 
The whole point of the experiment is that you see a series of videos, either na naked men or naked women. Yeah. And we will measure your bodily response through your pupil dilation. Okay, yeah. And then the second way of doing it is through this penile arousal gauge. Mm -hmm. You just attach that to the middle of your penis. Don't roll. The middle. The middle. Middle of the shaft. Middle of the shaft. It won't feel any different to you than a, a regular rubber band. <laughs> so you say. This is purely a test of sexual arousal. It will show how much I'm aroused by men compared to women. We actually just switched to the first explicit video, which is a male right over there. The pupil cannot lie. If you see something that's arousing to you, and even if you try to look a little bit away, you still see dilation because it's an automatic response. It's not something that they can consciously control. If I look at the penile gauge, he's just really aroused. Now for my reactions to the women. Now his eyes also start wandering around what's going on in the room. And I would say he's not showing much of a response. It looks like his penis just shriveled a little bit. The clouds are used to bring me back to an unaroused state so the instruments can measure the difference. He might like the clouds actually a little bit more than, than the women. So in case you don't know it yet, you give me your responses, I would say you're gay. So it's definite. It's and on a, on a sort of, on a spectrum, on a scale? You were still responding almost exclusively to the males mm. and not at all to the females. So I sit very firmly at one end of the yes, spectrum, exactly. right? I've been scored 100% for attraction to the same sex. So officially, I'm about as gay as they come. Your genitals don't lie. I love that. Your genitals don't lie. Now it's official that I'm 100% gay. We're going down here. I'm going to undertake as many of the gay cures as I can. I'll then retake the sexual orientation test to see if the therapies have worked. I'm going to start with an extreme treatment that was used as recently as the 1980s in Britain. That's a sinister folder, isn't it? And shockingly was carried out on thousands of men. There were two types of treatment. There was what we call chemical aversion therapy and there was electrical aversion therapy. Aversion therapy is a type of behavioural modification where a patient is taught to associate homosexual thoughts and behaviour with severe pain and discomfort. These were cures that were delivered on the NHS uh, by registered medical professionals. And this was NHS? Yeah. Doctors like me horrifically would have gone, this is the right thing to do. That's right. So you would go to your GP and say, I think I'm gay and I don't want to be. Yeah. And they would go, right, no problem, we have a treatment for that. that that's right. I'm about to undergo my first gay cure. Professor Nolan will carry out the procedure. 40 years ago, he was a young psychiatric nurse who administered this same treatment to gay NHS patients. Well, I was part of the team, and that meant giving particular attention to the patients who were regarded as homosexual, escorting them to the treatment room, assisting in the giving of the treatment, and basically reporting back to the consultants as to how they were doing. I'm given a drug which will make me violently ill. The treatment is designed to create an association in my mind between gay arousal and feelings of extreme nausea. When you do feel sick and you begin to vomit, don't go to the sink, vomit where you are. Please don't attempt to wash your mouth out. That is part of the full experience. <coughs> The message is reinforced via audio tape. Gay sex is unnatural. Nobody can love you like this. NHS patients would have had one of these sessions every two hours, night and day for three days, surrounded by their own feces and vomit. Very, very distressful. 
the belief at the time was that human nature was changeable. You break people to such a point where they are going to concede and say, yes, I'll go with it because the trauma, the revulsion, the utter despair that I feel, I've got to get away from it. Your behavior is revolting. And just kind of ridiculous. I was thinking of people who've been through this that really wanted it to change them, desperately wanted it to change them, that they'd volunteer to put themselves through this. You know, and all of this in my head, and, and it was people like me that would administer this. Let me ask you, what did you think of? What you were doing at the time. Well, I was quite young and naive at the time, and I went along with what the consultants told me. We were devising a new treatment, mm. and we were going to help people that were ill. Did it ever work for anybody? I never saw any patients stand up and say that cure was effective. I'm now transformed. I've been amazed to discover that many people still see homosexuality as a condition that can be cured. Today in the US, there's a whole industry based on gay cures, and I'm going out to investigate. Can they cure me? I'm in the airport, and I'm off to America, about to hit the Bible Belt, which is really the kind of the heartland, the, the fatherland of gay cures. The southern states are home to an array of people offering to cure homosexuality. There's even a special name for gays who claim to have been cured. They are ex-gays. I'm an ex-gay and out and proud. Those offering gay cures include licensed psychotherapists. Do this first. Phrenology by colours, isn't it? Like painting by numbers, it's phrenology by numbers. And there are even self-help manuals touting DIY gay cures, like the rubber band flick, for every time I have a gay thought. This is sort of the equivalent of the Catholic version of mortification of the flesh. Ah, it really hurts. I've arranged my first gay cure appointment with a therapist who's got 17 years experience. The technique is all about treating homosexuality like a harmful addiction. So I am on my way today to Paris, Gay Paris, no less, to be the gay in Gay Paris. Just like drug or alcohol rehabilitation, gay rehab attempts to completely isolate the patient from his addiction. John. John Smid was a major figure in this field. He's now retired, but has agreed to take me through the therapy. Let me take your bag for you. Come on in, have a seat. We know that where you came from, you probably didn't live a pure life. Probably not terribly so, pure. John ran Love in Action, a three-month residential program which aimed to strip its patients of all things gay. So we're going to be ridding your life of things that bring back your past of homosexuality, okay. clothing styles, entertainment. And I look at this, it's obviously a picture of a man mm. um, that may be a very attractive man to you or very erotic. You would not be able to keep that. Okay. In your clothing, certain things can cause us to feel sensual or sexual. Certain things like types of underwear that we wear, types of clothing. And if this is stirring your sensuality, if it stirs you to want to desire sexual arousal or sex with someone else, mm -hmm. then I'm not sure that that's necessarily the healthiest thing for you to wear. You know, in Europe, 
fashion is a little different than it is here. Yeah. But if you were from the United States, we probably would not let you keep these shoes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You don't need Gator with these. <laughs> I see you've brought some music. Yeah. Music is entertainment. Entertainment oftentimes rises up the senses. It has to be Christian music. Okay. Now, of course, Mozart, well, that's not Christian. Classical music is not Christian. And Adele, Adele is very popular within the gay community. I want to make clear, you don't do this anymore, do you? No, I don't run a program like this anymore. Why not? This model came from a model of a program for drugs and alcohol. Uh -huh. And to treat you as an addict is extremely harmful and shaming if you're not an addict. No. John resigned from Love in Action after the program came under heavy criticism for treating teenagers against their will. Formerly an ex-gay, he has renounced conversion therapy and now lives with his male partner. Were you in a relationship at that time? I was married. And during those 24 years of my marriage, outwardly I looked like a typical traditional marriage. But I really was never sexually attracted to her. Never. But I would imagine there are people going through this who end up getting married and the wife is completely oblivious yes. to the truth and that ends messily. Yes. And two people are damaged, not one. Yes. John may have turned his back on gay rehab, but these addiction-based therapies are still carried out all over America. They honestly believe that by taking a patient away from everything deemed gay, they can cure someone. So I'm going to give being straight a go. Will I feel differently if I change my wardrobe and start wearing real men's clothes? I wouldn't mind walking around in that. Do you want fries with that? This is just pure evil. You look in the mirror and you think, yeah, I look all right. And it gives you confidence, doesn't it? Strip all of that away so what you see in the mirror is not really what you would choose or what you would naturally feel comfortable in, but what you think you should be wearing. Where's your confidence and your self-esteem? The very thing that therapy is supposed to be giving you, it's stripping away. My search continues, and I've come across a more sophisticated form of gay-to-straight conversion called reparative therapy. It's a form of psychotherapy designed to root out the cause of homosexuality, usually in childhood. And I've just been downloading all the emails that have come in. I've approached a number of practitioners, but so far, none of them want to meet me. The fact that Jensen, my name spelt wrong, is an openly gay man disqualifies him from being objective and fair-minded. Not interested. Wow. <laughs> Harsh. That is a bit of a blow, actually, because it's one of the, the core treatments in, in trying to change sexuality. Finally, after considerable digging, one reparative therapist agrees to be interviewed. David Pickup is a licensed psychotherapist, and he says reparative therapy has also cured him of being gay. David. Hi, I'm Christian. Nice Good to meet you. you. Now, I can't undergo reparative therapy myself because it takes months or even years, but I am going to find out what's involved. So if I came to you as a patient and I said to you, I've noticed always throughout my life a background of, of, of homosexual thoughts, how would the therapy start? How, what well, kind of I strive to keep an open mind, but so far I've found that there's actually a cause, a causal nature to homosexuality. Homosexual feelings arise because there have been lost years of unmet male love and bonding needs. One of the other causes is uh, sexual abuse by an older male. And that was my story. And so the essence of reparative therapy is to find that emotional upset and try and deal with it. The therapy takes the form of intensive one-on-one -on -one sessions designed to repair the childhood trauma responsible. And when that shame is released, uh, they take a sign. And the homosexual feeling has either lessened automatically or dissipated entirely automatically. You've been through all this, so that's why it's extra fascinating. You're both a therapist and someone who has 
What do you call yourself out of interest? Oh, I was born heterosexual. That's easy. You were born heterosexual? Yeah. And you would argue actually that everybody is? I would argue that, yeah. One single great whacking big sticking point is we're all born heterosexual and trauma causes us to be homosexual. Did I have a distant father? My father worked, my mother didn't. So does that mean my father was distant and absent whilst my mother was ever present and overbearing? Well, a therapist might say that. I might say that was a fairly normal family for me, is I cannot recall any traumatic, I certainly was never abused. I think it's very easy to get a model and actually make it stick to anybody. Although a large number of reparative therapists believe it, there is no scientific consensus that homosexuality is caused by childhood trauma or abuse. Some people claim this therapy works, but as a doctor, I'm worried how it might affect vulnerable people. I've been trawling the internet to see which gay cure I can try next, and I've come across one I can't believe. This is Dr. Mungadzi. He claims to have spent 20 years developing a way of diagnosing and treating patients by identifying emotional trauma inside the right hemisphere of their brains. He calls it a natural MRI. He gets you to colour in a picture of your brain using kids' wax crayons. And according to what colour you have assigned to a particular area, he will then tell you where your various psychological problems, traumas and blockages are that are causing your homosexuality. I've been trying to find evidence of any training in neuroscience, but Dr. Mungadzi is not a medical doctor. Instead, he has a doctorate in counsellor education with a minor in psychology. His slick-looking videos and scientific-sounding claims could be quite appealing to potential patients. But is there any medical basis? To get to the bottom of that question, I want to experience his therapy myself. I'm going undercover as a gay patient. How do I look? With a secret filming rig. Oh, all right, aren't they? OK, are we ready? I suspect Dr. Mungadzi would be much more guarded with an openly gay and well-known doctor. So, I've made my appointment under the alias Adrian Bedford. I've booked an hour-long session. My request is going to be, cure me, I'm gay. Hi, Dr. Hi. Mungadzi. Yes. Oh, I'm Adrian. Nice Adrian Bedford, how are you? Good. I'm... Yeah. yeah, so, if you could just uh, do this first. So just any... You just cut as, as it feels. OK. No conventional consultation takes place at all. I'm simply given the outline of a brain and told to colour it in. OK, I've done it. OK, well, let's see what's, what's happening here. The first thing I learn about Dr Mungadzi is a big surprise. What colour is this? That's a sort of... I guess it's a pinky, pinky purple, isn't it? Okay, yeah, it's like a fuchsia? Yeah, fuchsia, that's a good okay. word for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm colour blind. <laughs> oh, no, really? I know, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. But you do colour therapies yeah. and you're colour blind. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Wow. Okay, is that green or brown? That's brown. Although he still hasn't yeah, well, asked me anything that. about myself, Dr Mungadzi claims to have already uncovered evidence of trauma in my childhood. Whenever we see black in the brain, that's a collection of some very negative experiences that we may have had either growing up... Yeah, or... but I have sort of attraction to men. Mm -hmm. And you, you're saying maybe this is explained here? Not, not maybe. Not maybe. That, that is the cause of it, right there. That is the cause. Oh, gosh. Black is not a color that we find in a brain that's not been traumatized. Yet again, a professional therapist is telling me that some early psychological trauma, which I don't believe ever happened, is the reason why I'm gay. Can, can you do anything about that? Yes. Can we cure mm -hmm. the gayness here? He... he spends time talking me through the meanings of the different colours I've used, but I want Dr Mungadzi to explain how his therapy actually works. Part of your pain is not having felt like you belonged mm. growing up in your family. This is what the lamb green is mm. in, in, in your soul. That rejection thing is what's driving 
this brown. But that makes gray say to brown, who oh, I can protect you. You, know, you can belong with me and uh, I'm better than your parents. I'm better than the way you grew up. So this gray thing starts seducing brown to where brown starts agreeing to whatever gray is, not knowing that gray is trying to steal your sexuality. It seems that the therapy consists of analyzing the different colors on my brain picture and then, over a number of sessions, working to change the colors until somehow I become heterosexual. It sounds complicated, but it's very simple. All you do mm. is you start asking, what is Brown's feelings about gray? Yeah. My hour is up. There's just one thing left to do. What do I owe you? Uh, 250 a second is the first session. Okay. It's, it's only 125. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. That was really quite extraordinary. I've never heard such incorrect medical nonsense in my life. Apparently, your thyroid gland is in your brain. Your adrenal glands are in your brain. Above the amygdala is the adrenal gland. Oh, adrenaline. Of, yes. Oh, adrenaline, adrenal gland. Yes. OK, so it's in there. Yeah. yeah. The clue is in the name, adrenal, above the kidney, not in the brain. Yeah. This is my thyroid here. Yeah. yeah. My thyroid's up here. Now, my homework is this. I asked Brown, what do you think about Gray? Do you like gray? Do we want to keep gray or do we want to let gray go? How do you do that? I have absolutely no idea. I was really cross because he's part of my profession. He's a healthcare professional. Well, certainly his therapy is an utter load of rubbish based on no science whatsoever. I'm astounded that in 2013, many people still believe being gay is a curable condition. So I'm in America undergoing gay cure therapy myself. As well as therapy sessions, I've also discovered a plethora of self-help cures which I'm trialing while on the road. Ah, it really hurts. My latest is a popular self-help book with a rather snappy title. Practical exercises for men in recovery of same-sex attraction. And this is one of these self-help books that you, you, you fill in yourself. This book contains 79 de-gaying exercises and is considered the Bible of home gay cures. A goodbye letter to same-sex attraction. Exercise 58 is quite straightforward. To draw myself as a gay person, Possibly some blue chinos. And then as a straight person. Exercise 27, designed to quell any naughty gay thoughts, is rather more intimate. Keeping a masturbation diary. It only fuels the fire and will inhibit recovery. So I'm going to try and get over my uh, masturbatorial habits. Um, and I'm going to go through these, these questions and answer them. So the first thing is, is, is this a stress release? It's, it's the release of something. I don't know if it's stress, but um, I'm not sure. Am I trying to avoid or medicate a feeling? No, I'm just having a wank. Well, I want to keep this a secret. Yes. It's, I, I don't particularly want to answer all these things. They're quite private. I certainly don't want to tell you about them. Um, and it's kind of more about making me feel feel ashamed, so um, time for bed or something else. Despite the thriving gay cure movement and people who claim they've been cured, there is no scientific consensus that they actually work. I'm keen to talk to people who have undergone gay therapies, and I've made contact with a man who was treated for five years, but he's still gay. Ah. Hey, Todd. Welcome, yes. I'm Christian. Ah, good. Hi, very nice to meet you. Pam and Todd were married for six years and were staunch members of their local church. This is the picture we had taken just before we married. This is our family. Oh, what a great picture. Yeah. They had four children between them from previous relationships. That's Todd being straight. 
See, it, you know. It worked. It, it, yeah, I thought it worked. It worked. It was great. Because I mean, look, I got this little chin hair yeah, thing. Yeah, but still, I wasn't a complete idiot. You looked quite straight. You think? Way more than now. I mean, people meet him now and they're like, really? You didn't know? But he was acting more straight then. When Pam discovered Todd was having gay affairs, the church pastor made him undergo gay therapy. This what was, was, the, what was the word he used? This will help cure you from being gay. That this was the phrase yeah. he used. And did you think, no, great? I, was, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go. I drug my feet. Oh, God, no. Todd's therapy encouraged living and behaving like a straight man. Playing sports and having male friends and uh, changing the way you talk so that you don't sound gay. Use your hands. The way you use your hands. Everything he was doing was only fueling <laughs> our attractions. Giving us all of this male-on-male -male affection was only making us want it more. Yeah. But I just, I hated it. And I realized what a fraud I was being to my own children. What are your views on gay therapies in general now? Mm -hmm. Do you think gay therapies work? No. Do you? No. 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 I, know. I know. I would no. like it if they didn't exist. After five years undertaking a range of treatments costing thousands of dollars, Pam and Todd separated. But they both now have new men in their lives and they feel closer to each other. The therapy doesn't deliver what it promises and in fact it tends to just spread a situation out like their marriage for longer and longer and longer until people get more and more miserable, till kids come into the picture and get involved more and more people get affected negatively by it. Todd's church preached to him that homosexuality is an abomination. But that was some time ago. I want to know what the younger generation of Christians think. The local evangelical churches won't let me in to film, so I'm nabbing some young churchgoers as they leave a service. So I've come here to church, and there's been going on all day a huge big convention um, so I'm expecting to find all sorts of religious people because I really want to sort of vox pop them, talk to them about their views on homosexuality. Homosexuality is a sin. OK. And of course you can be forgiven. Is it a choice? Yes. It's a choice. Yes, it's a choice. So I would have to choose not to be gay. About people who are born gay, something. Where does yeah, that come it's from? Not, it's uh, for Satan. It's, um... Because of Satan? Yes. Do you sure. think gay people should maybe come here to be cured? For sure. For sure. For All sure. of them. All of them. Were they born that way, or was it oh. something they chose to they do? They weren't or? born like that. No, they're. Um, what happens to them? Spirits kind of like yeah. control their mind and make them think. Bad spirits. Stuff, bad spirits. Like spirits, demons. Like demons, yeah. You just go around them and make them think stuff that are not really true. Yeah. So it's kind of gay things. demons are causing this. Yes. yes. Wow, 16 and 20, and homosexuality is caused by demons. Fuck me. I'm really... <laughs> I don't know, I'm just kind of quite upset. What if you're gay, being told that? It's understandable why then you might seek out to be cured of your demons, cured of your gayness. God. I think you should get me out of here, quite honestly. I think I've had enough. I'm concerned by the pressure young, vulnerable people in these communities must feel to undergo gay to straight conversion. And alarmingly, I've heard news of a lobby group who want the right to perform gay cures on young teenagers. I've decided to make my way to one of their protests outside the Supreme Court. The event is organized by protesters who claim to be cured gays, or ex-gays as they call it and they're campaigning for gay conversion therapy to be available to under-18s throughout the US. So they've got their press conference now, and it's kind of a little bit of jeopardy. Will anyone turn up or won't they turn up? And part of me just wants to go in really hard and aggressively and because I'm kind of annoyed and frustrated. But the doctor in me just feels really, really sorry for these people. They just look so lost. Gay activists 
claim that change is not possible and that you're born gay. And today, the people standing behind you, the majority of whom are former homosexuals, can attest to the, to the opposite. Over 100 years of scientific literature shows there are predictable reasons why anyone develops homosexual feelings. It's basically, the boys don't sufficiently attach to their primary gender role model, their dads. They seem to like talking about scientific evidence. The girls will over-identify with the father and the boys will So I wonder if these the ex-gays will be open to my own little scientific investigation. I wonder if I could have something. Is yes. that allowed? Can I use a microphone? It would help Yes, me. you may. Um, I'm a doctor, and therefore I come from a very scientific background. And I think we need to introduce a bit more science into this. And Cornell University are currently running a test it's a test of sexuality and sexual orientation. And I think it would be fascinating if you would consider taking it to see what has happened to your orientation as a result of this therapy. Would that be something that you would be interested in doing? What do you think? Okay. I'd have to see it. So I think that's actually very fair. If the study was done on a fair manner, I think that many of us would gladly volunteer to do that. I'm looking forward to these ex-gays taking this test. But some people are already unconvinced that they're really cured. Don't you think he's hot? Just look at him. That guy is hot. Come on, deny that he's hot. Look How are you, sir? Look at him. I'm just some clown. Look at him now. Come here, he's hot. Some clown. Look, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> you there guys, is, you know what? There Good is, luck to you guys. There's my wife. Good luck to you guys. Really, good luck to you guys. She turns me on. Good luck to you. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. It worries me that some of these US groups are exporting their methods and beliefs to the rest of the world. So now I want to see what's happening in Britain. In America, I've discovered that many gay cures appear to be based on the idea that homosexuality is caused by childhood trauma or abuse. So this makes it a personal as well as professional issue. Hello. And now I'm back home in the UK, it's something I'm keen to talk to my own father about. Hello. The Wayfarer returns. You all right? How are you? I'm hey. okay, I'm okay. Most of the therapists I talked to told me that I'm gay because of severe emotional trauma as a child, and that usually comes in the form of some sort of abuse. Parental. Possibly. What mm. do you think about that? A bit of rubbish, isn't it? You might have had your ears clipped once or twice, or slap at the back of your leg. Your mother used to do that when you've been particularly naughty. I mean, I just can't see uh, how that would affect your sexuality. I mean, parents can't choose their children's sexuality. Did you, I, did you always I, know that I was gay? No, it didn't concern us. We didn't think about it, Christian. I don't think your mother minded too much. You know, as I say, we still loved you just as much. But no, you know I, I, I was disappointed. <laughs> Thank you. That, in fact, you weren't going to... I'd have been sent get, off to camp otherwise. ...get married to a girl and have children. <laughs> no, I subscribe to those who say that you, you're really born that way. Attributing homosexuality to childhood emotional trauma or abuse is widely disputed by experts in a variety of fields. So I'm concerned to learn that here in Britain, some Christian groups are endorsing this message. I'm disturbed by one organization making headlines because they want to make gay to straight psychotherapy available on the NHS. I've arranged to meet up with a man spearheading the campaign, outspoken Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Mike Davidson. We think the science is clear that indicates that for some people, homosexuality is not fixed and is changeable. Don't ban this therapy. Make sure it happens in safe contexts. Regulate it, but don't ban it. That's but the very... leading researchers in this field, who I've spoken to, the leading... would disagree with you. The leading gay researchers? No, I have no idea on their sexuality. That doesn't right. come into it for me. Uh -huh. No idea. The campaign for gay therapies on the NHS isn't calling for the bad old days of aversion therapy, but I'm still shocked by the idea of NHS gay cures in 2013. However, there's a much more alarming conversion phenomenon creeping in below the radar in evangelical churches across the country. 
I want to experience an exorcism, and I found a church that carries them out on a regular basis in East London. What are you holding on to, you spirit? What is it you're holding on to? What are you holding on to? Are you human or spirit? Say it. I don't know. I don't know. Get out of him! I cast you out in Jesus' name! This is Pastor Vincent Ten Buhaus, an evangelical Christian who runs his own ministry. Today, he's performing a deliverance to cast out evil spirits, not for gayness, but for severe anxiety problems. Let him be set free in Jesus' name. Any spirit, none of God, go! He claims to have used the same approach to cure people of unwanted homosexuality. I was dealing with a young man. He was struggling with this tendency, this urge of homosexual thoughts. The psychology is too deep to go into right now, but he definitely had a clear-cut case of dissociation, dissociate identities. I'm so disturbed by this conversion method. Pastor Vincent is referring to dissociative identity disorder, a highly complex psychiatric condition. He appears to be diagnosing a serious illness, but he has no medical qualifications. He was set free by that same Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. I suppose my concern as a doctor is, aren't these actually serious psychiatric conditions? <laughs> Are you diagnosing things that perhaps doctors should be diagnosing? <laughs> you're well, not a doctor, right? No, I'm not a doctor. Is there no. a risk you're going to miss really quite mentally ill people? I go by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and, and I can only do, you know, that what God allows me to do. But if there's anything mental health, then we prefer to, you know, to persuade them to really seek, you know, seek help through your GP, through the NHS. If homosexuality is caused by some terrible trauma, some child abuse, something like that, how then can it be a sin? Well, that's a good question. <clears throat> you can have a desire but at the same time, you can have a choice to act upon it. And whatever issues they have, be it sexual, be it mental, be it uh, physical, be it psychological. What did concern me amongst many, many things that concern me was that he did start talking about medical diagnosis. And actually, that's really alarming because it's extremely convincing for a public to hear words like this. You latch onto them. Do you think this man knows what he's talking about and this is the man for me that's going to help me? Deliverance or exorcism is the most worrying gay cure I've found in my investigation because it has absolutely no scientific basis. And most alarmingly, it's happening on our doorsteps and appears to be growing in popularity. At the beginning of this journey, I took a test which showed scientifically I was 100% gay. After being exposed to a wide variety of gay cures, I now want to take the test again to see if in any way they have worked. Am I less gay? Of course I'm curious. I'm always curious to know what if, but actually I'm 100% certain I know the answer already. I also invited a number of the people I met in America who claimed they were cured of being gay to take the test with me today. And although they initially agreed... I think that many of us would gladly volunteer to do that. I've had some bad news. And how many of them are actually going to be doing it? None of them. Not one of them. In their view, the scope of the test was too narrow. It's essentially a lie detector, as I said, isn't it? And none of them will dare take that lie detector. One 69-year-old ex-gay did say yes, but he fell outside Cornell's age parameters for meaningful results. So, I'm on my own. I'm going to take exactly the same test as before, measuring my body's response to sexual images of both women. He is showing no genital response. And men. He's focusing primarily on the genitals now, not so much the surroundings. It's always strange walking into a room full of people who've been watching you watching porn. <laughs> One doesn't know quite what face to have on. Do you think that what you were attracted to changed? You tell me. Well, 
looking at the data, looking at the pictures, I would have to conclude that you are 100% gay. Right, okay. So if the therapies had any influence at all, it certainly didn't affect your sexual orientation. So for the first time that you're seeing it, you would still conclude 100% gay. Absolutely, and part of that is that you had zero interest in the women in terms of sexual attractions. This whole journey, I've really immersed myself in this. I've tried out the therapies. I've looked at the science. I've thought about it hard. We must practice evidence-based medicine. And I'm in no way convinced that there's enough good peer-reviewed evidence to support what these therapists are practicing. In fact, there is quite a lot of evidence, particularly in young people, that these therapies are potentially harmful. Behind all of this, lies the bias of religion. And I'm really concerned that religion is having far too much of a say over science. And I don't think this should ever be the case. I asked Dr. Mungadzi to respond to my secret filming investigation. Unfortunately, he declined to comment. <laughs> 